Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I'm going to be discussing the option to add a relay subsystem to a breakout board that doesn't already have a relay integrated in its design. Most of you already realize from previous videos I offer a very simple six axis breakout board package. It does come with the power supply and the ground splitters, but that's virtually all it comes with. It doesn't have um, uh, integrated relays, and I did that mainly because I'm practicing a principle that we use in full scale automation. And that principle is allowing the end user to add what's known as a subsystem. For those of you out there who are not familiar with a subsystem as a term, let me define it for you. Um, a subsystem is nothing more than actually taking electrical components and isolating them. And we do that because it's much easier for the end user to service the unit and also troubleshoot it due to the fact of them only having to actually confine that troubleshooting to a single area. Let me explain again in detail. If this relay is giving you trouble that's wired into this breakout board, it's much easier for you to just unplug the signal wire and find out if it's the relay giving you trouble or the breakout board. If it's integrated into the breakout board, you basically are stuck going through and you can only troubleshoot that actual component to a certain level before you say, okay, now I have to replace the breakout board. Now guys, if you purchase a breakout board and it has an integrated relay, count on the fact that when that relay fails and they all fail eventually, you will have to replace that breakout board. And to some guys, that's not a big deal. The guys I'm talking about are the ones that, or I'm directing this video towards, is ones that are looking at running a business with their machine. Then it becomes a major deal. Let me explain. We all know that things always go wrong at the worst possible time. Plan on it, expect it. With CNC, it's a guarantee. And it's that long holiday weekend, it's Sunday night, you're not going back to work till Tuesday, and you're, you're running into problems at 10 o'clock at night with the board, and you realize you've got to replace the board, you can't get one, and you have a client that's expecting a product on Wednesday after a long holiday weekend. You are in trouble. Doing it this way isolates you from if the relay did fail on your board, you know you're going to have to replace it. You could still use the board. I have some guys out there who say, well, yeah, you know, I can still use the board without the relay. You hope. You hope you can. In some instances, it's not always the case. Either way, this is the correct way to wire in your accessories. And the main reason is as discussed. If this relay ever fails, it does not affect the breakout board itself. If you have an extra relay on hand, you could be up and running again as fast as you could change a couple wires, which in this case, you're only looking at one, two, three, four, five wires, and you're back up and running again. So four screws, uh, five wires, and you're good. With the breakout board, you have to reset everything up, re-correlate your system. That is a major hassle. So I'm telling you right now, um, what I try to do is integrate a kit, just like I did with the G540, uh, with the relay splitter, and integrate a relay splitter for a, the ability to add relays as a subsystem to virtually any breakout board in existence. It's very, very simple to do. I'm going to cover the wiring diagram you see before you here. You can see that this schematic right here for illustration purposes represents my six axis breakout board. Again, very simple in design. You have your outputs right here. Your inputs are right here. 5 volt power supply input right here. Um, the, this part of the terminal again is not used and you, of course you have the DB25 female input. This is more or less the standard breakout board you'll find virtually anywhere. Okay. Um, again, we do have ground splitters here and we have a ground splitter here, one on the input side, one on the output side. I recommend that highly isolating each segregated ground. Um, yes, I know that the ground is the same on this board, but you should, under best practice, Isolate each ground from an input and isolate each ground from an output. This is what is supposed to be done. Is it ever done all the time? Uh, online, it's not represented enough. It should be because, again, it makes it much easier to isolate an issue should you ever encounter one. Does it entail more wiring? Yes, it does. Some guys say, well, that's redundant. I'm not going to do that. Your system is your system. I'm telling you the best way to do it. Again, best practice doesn't always mean um, the best as far as time constraint. That explains why, again, pricing on quality built systems are going to be there because they will be redundant like this to, to have that availability for the end user to service their system in the least amount of time required. So that being said, I'm going to cover the wiring diagram right now in detail. 
It's very simple. It looks a little busy, but it's very simple. I'm going to cover it real quick. You can see here, this is our six-axis breakout board. Again, you've got your X, Y, Z, and A. I've only got four axes hooked up, which is under a typical system format. That's usually what you're going to see. Guys with five-axis system are kind of rare because the software to support five-axis, as I covered in previous videos, is really, really expensive because, again, the manufacturer of the software, CAD CAM, they realize what you'll be able to create with that software. That being said, we're going to go with a standardized four axis system at the maximum. And again, you can see here you have these leftover pins on your imp on your outputs. Excuse me. You've got 14, you've got uh, 1, 16, and 17. So in theory, okay, and this is purely theory, um, you could actually add up to an additional four relays. Okay, we've got one here, and then you've got three more you can add. So for those of you who are not aware of that, any signal output can be translated into that output signal to trigger a relay. Okay, I don't know how many of you don't know that, but I want to make you aware of that because guys that are going with full scale equipment or knee mills and they want to go with you know full retrofit designs, um, you're going to find this to be extremely helpful to you because it will allow you to expand your machine for whatever requirements you need. So that being said, we can come over here now, and you can see I'm using just as this uh, terminal as an example of an output is, is terminal number 14. You can see that we've come over here, and here's our relay splitter once again. If you guys have reviewed my G540 terminal uh, relay splitter, you're going to see it's the same principle. The only difference is it's configured to support the breakout board and the subsystem relays. What you see here is that pin number 14 is coming out. It gets traced over. Now, we did not use a terminal splitter here to conjoin these two terminal outputs. We want them individualized. And the main reason we do is because we want to be able to segregate one relay on this pin. However, you could use a terminal splitter if you wanted to and have two relays be triggered by one signal, which I've already correlated in the G540 previous relay kit. It's this system can be expanded tenfold. I mean, it's the possibilities once again are virtually endless. I did that for a reason. But what you're seeing here is a general setup where again we've got terminal 14 coming over here. It comes over here and then it feeds over here to the actual signal trigger on the relay. And then of course over here we're going to move down. You can see this this actual terminal is open. So if you wanted to add another relay output, you could, which would support then two if you needed more. You would simply run another terminal block down here and split these signals once again. And you'll notice we are not daisy chaining anything. Everything is very easily isolatable, which again leads to that ability to troubleshoot the system if required. And then on top of that, um, you, the end user, are able to keep things as neat as possible, utilizing only two terminal blocks that would support a multitude of relays if required. So again, this whole idea of staying in this hobby format, oh, I can't do this or I can't do that because my breakout board doesn't have relays integrated in it, you can add a relay whenever you want utilizing this kit. So as we're going down right here, you can see we have our 5-volt, 3-amp power supply. These relays are all triggered by 5-volt uh, power. Uh, and the main reason I did that, again, is because a breakout board, my breakout board explicitly, runs on 5 volts. So this way we could split this power. You can see we've got the positive coming in and it comes in here and then this positive comes over here feeds your breakout board and then it's going to feed on the opposite side the DC in on the relay so basically you're taking one terminal in from your actual power supply and splitting it three ways okay once again isolating everything keeping it neat and keeping a centralized location we're going to come down once again and you can see we have our ground which again comes in from the wall and then that ground is going to come over here, feed your power supply, and then also feed your GX16 3-pin connector, which again, as everyone knows, um, I've said it in my last video, I'm going to reiterate the point. The GX16 aviation connectors are the top dog when it comes to this type of connections. Um, and why I say that is they are screw lock connections. They are totally professional. They're most durable. Um, they do require soldering, but... Um, for most guys, that is absolutely not an issue. Um, and again, as far as simplicity, they're about as easy as you're going to get because you simply drill a hole and mount them in your chassis. It's very, very quick to do, and you can expand at will.
and I think that's that's the big key here. But um, overall, getting back to this, the wiring, you can see that it's the same principle. Ground comes in. We're using a terminal splitter here so we can conjoin all these terminals as we did up here and as we did up here. And as we do that, all we're doing is coming in with ground, splitting the ground out, going to the power supply, and then splitting the ground out once again to your actual GX16 uh, three-pin connector. The live comes, comes over from normally open or normally closed. And you can see on pin one, that's where that gets connected. And then the neutral comes over here where we're actually splitting it again from the wall, comes in, goes back to the power supply to feed the neutral, and then back over here once again to pin number two. Guys, this is a very, very easy, neat setup. The relays that I've chosen right here, they are monsters. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's give you guys a little, little feedback on what we've got here. We've got a 240 amp or excuse me, 240 volt, 30 amp relay. Again, she does have the power LED. Um, it's switchable, high and low trigger. It's also got the working indicator. And again, when it's on and off, you'll get an LED for that as well. Um, the terminal block on these is much nicer than most I've seen. I like using circle ring connectors, and this unit does support that. Um, the only thing is you really don't have the, the constraints here with the holes on the actual circuit board are tight, and you really don't have the room to use um, a toolless mount because they're just too thick. That being said, and when I say thick, the actual thumb nuts are, are just too confined in, in space constraint to actually use them. But even if you had to replace four screws to replace one, it still beats the hell out of having to rewire your whole system. So I look at it as, as it's kind of, you know, uh, understanding where your battles are and, and what to accept and what not to. But overall, this relay is extremely durable. And again, for this kind of package, you really couldn't ask for more because it'll support virtually any accessory you want to add. And the beauty of the whole thing is, again, if you're having a problem with the relay or even for that matter, the breakout board, um, you really don't want to disturb anything you don't have to. And in this case, it makes it much easier to isolate, as I already discussed with the um, subsystem principle. But the wiring schematic right here, I'll zoom in again real quick just to show you. You can see we've got our negative on our power supply getting split once again. It comes over here to the breakout board, and that's on the 5 volt. Uh, the 5 volt negative comes in here, gets split to the breakout board, and then comes over here and gets split to the actual DC negative side of your relay. Again, it's just powering the relay. Overall, though, this relay splitter, once again, is a lifesaver as far as keeping your wiring as neat and as centralized as possible. Of course, it will be graphic, once again, with the 3M8518 um, vinyl so that everything looks beautiful and it keeps your system, um, once again, as neat and organized as we possibly can on top of. The terminal will actually include the toolless mounts, which I think is imperative on as many items and accessories as you can. Um, Breakout board kit, um, one of the things I, I actually will include from now on, I, I just really haven't talked about it yet, is thumb nuts with it. Um, if you message me and you, you're looking at purchasing it, please message me and I can include the thumb nut mounts. It makes it so much easier. If you did ever have to change the breakout board, um, you just go in there and just use the thumb nuts and you can remove it. And it, It's just a smoother process overall. But overall, guys, you can see here how simple this is. Um, and again, as far as setting up Mach 3, because I get asked about that quite a bit as well, very simple. If this is your output side of the board, which again, outputs are always going to be driving your, your stepper drivers, all you would do is configure this in Mach 3. Um, it, Mach 3 doesn't know what signal it's sending. It just simply knows that it's an output. So you would just designate, you know, in this instance, you'd be designating uh, Terminal 14, and that would actually be your relay, and you configure that in Mach 3 under your spindle settings if you haven't done that already, or for whatever other accessory you wanted to run, and you'd be golden, and that would trigger your relay. So, again, if you needed a uh, – I will give a diagram on that as well because uh, showing that in the listing makes sense. It gives you guys as much feedback as possible to get the system up and, and smoothly running. But um, overall, you can see exactly where I was going with this. And again, the kit really will make it all too easy to expand a system that you already have um, and never leave you guys without the availability to add more functionality. And that's the big thing. Functionality and serviceability. You know, I mean, you guys, if you're going to expand, you want to expand, but you never want to do it at, at, the, at the cost of serviceability because parts will fail. 
Um, I think I'm unlike most vendors in that fact that I've been in full scale environments where I plan on parts failing. If you look at a lot of the designs that are offered, they don't ever plan on that because when you see these integrated boards, I'm seeing more and more integrated designs, the Massos and all these other designs that are coming out where they're integrated. They kind of forget the fact that even in the computer industry, and that's probably one of the best industries to look at, you know, in the mid 90s, there used to be a lot of boards offered with integrated video and integrated sound. And, you know, and I can't tell you how many times when you lost video, then you had to replace the board. If you lost sound, then you'd have to replace the board. And it got to the point where, you know, a lot of times these manufacturers started changing things up because they realized in the engineering field, you know, you got to plan on sometimes investing more to get more out of the system, at least for end user support. And that's where that serviceability factor comes in. So keep that in mind as far as, you know, what you're doing with your system. And again, that was where I went to isolate as many components as possible because I know that eventually parts will fail. It's inevitable. I don't care how well built your system is. It, you know, and in a perfect world, that wouldn't be the case, but we all know that they will fail. And the best thing you can do is prepare for them to fail, but do it in a way that it's it's not as intrusive to what you're doing. And, and that's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do it to where, you know, I'm looking at it as if I was working with you, all of my parts that I, I actually designed, that's, that's the way I look at it. I want to make it so you guys can service it simple. You know, I want it, I, I don't want it to take as much time. If you're having a problem with a relay, you can check the relay by just disconnecting it from the breakout board. You know, if you wanted to, you can disconnect it and you've got one isolated subsystem then. You have one wire coming in here if you have one relay hooked up. You could disconnect that and you've got just the breakout board then hooked up. And again, if it's a power supply thing, you could disconnect two connectors here and you're done. You know, I mean, it's that simple to isolate these components. You have one component here, which is your power supply, your master power for both units, and you're not running dual power supplies, you're just splitting the signal. You also will notice that again, like I stated earlier, you're not daisy chaining, okay? Everything is very easily isolated, and that is the way to do your system neatly, and again, to confine any problems that may arise. So for those of you out there that have questions, please don't be afraid to ask, but once again, you can see this really is not that difficult um, it, once you once you look at it and kind of break it down. I know it looks kind of busy, but it's really not. And again, everything is redundant. You can see here the connector. This is for one relay. If you had a multitude of relays, um, it would be the same exact wiring over and over again, depending upon how many terminals you wanted to uh, isolate for that relay subsystem. But overall, you could expand it virtually endlessly. Um, to support whatever you know application you have and then over here you've got because um, I get asked this all the time you know normally open normally close that's the end user you know on which way you want to go with your signals but I wanted the relay to support that so you can I've got it wired in for normally open but it's totally up to you um, and again I just wanted the relay to be able to support virtually any accessory and these relays do um, again this kit will be offered the same way the G540 relay kit is in an all-inclusive package from everything, including wire ties minus the wiring, you're going to get everything you need to wire this system up. Um, I can offer it with as many relays as you require, um, and we can do it with as many terminal blocks as you require. So keep that in mind. If you do have any questions, once again, my name is Vince. Um, you can email me at storm, S-T-O-R-M, 2313 at gmail.com, or message me direct through uh, my eBay store, which is eDealers Direct. Um, and I'll put a link to that as well, and you'll be set. Now, guys, of course, there'll be a link. I'm trying to include as many links as possible because I get questions on that all the time as well um, to get in touch not only, um, again, in the store, but also a link to the product so that if you want to review it, you can, and if you want to purchase it, you can as well. Once again, I thank you all for your support. I hope this video has been a help. Take care.